Hello. In the last few videos, I gave a brief overview of SMP and MPP architectures. In this video, I will give an overview of how parallelism is achieved in data stage jobs. Data stage parallel jobs are normally used to read data from different source systems, clean, transform, apply business logic on the data, and load the structured data to data warehouse tables. Because of parallelism, the overall job completes within a short span of time, even when the input records are large in number. Data state jobs achieve parallelism using any of the following methods data pipelining, data partitioning, combining both pipelining and partitioning, and dynamic data repartitioning. Data pipelining In data pipelining method, the source data is read and processed in segments. Assume the source stage has 10,000 lines of records. The job is set up to pick up 1000 lines of records at a time and pass it over to the next stages like transformer, lookup, filter, etc. The stages are running in different nodes or processors depending on the number of nodes that has been defined in the data state jobs configuration file. If it is SMP architecture, then different CPUs in the system could be used as different nodes. If it is MPP architecture, then different computers will be used as a node. So, all the intermediate stages between source and target will be running simultaneously in different processors. As soon as a segment of data is received by a stage, it will process it and send it to the next stage. So by the time the next segment of data is being read from the source, the available segment of data will be processed simultaneously and sent to the next stage and so on. So the data segments are continuously flowing from source to target data warehouse table as shown in this figure. Now, what happens if data pipelining is not employed in the first place? In case all the stages are running in the same node or processor, only one stage can be active at any point of time. So, first all the records from the source should be read and stored in the temporary memory space. Then this data is processed by the next stage and so on until it is returned to the target table. This increases the total time taken by the job to complete and also increases the necessity to have more memory when input data size is very high. Now let us see data partitioning parallelism technique. In data partitioning method, the input records are divided into partitions based on the method of partitioning defined in the data state job stages. The total number of partitions depends on the number of processing nodes defined in the configuration file. The data state job creates instances of the stages in all the defined processing nodes and all these instances run simultaneously processing the respective partitioned data that it received. Here again the nodes can be different CPUs in a SMP system or different computers in a MPP system. Now, let us see how data stage partitioning works. So, in data stage, we have the following methods of partitioning. Round-robin partitioning, random partitioning, 
same partitioning, entire partitioning, hash partitioning, modulus partitioning, range partitioning, DB2 partitioning, and auto partitioning. We will learn more about these partition techniques in a different video. Now, we can also combine data partitioning and pipelining and achieve even greater performance in the data stage jobs. In some cases, we may even need to repartition the data between intermediate stages in data stage job. For instance, you have initially processed data based on customer last name but now you want to process it on city that is you want to process on data grouped by city you will need to repartition to ensure that all customers belonging to the same city are in the same partition beware Repartitioning data between stages can affect performance of the job and also it can create unequal sized partitions which can be overhead to us. Thanks for watching this video. If you have questions or feedback, please post it in the comments section. Have a nice day.